Here at the encampment at Yorktown Victory Center, you can see a lot about the different aspects of a soldier's life. Um, what were some of the challenges he faced from day to day? See what uh, kind of living conditions he was uh, having to deal with. The time period we uh, portray here is during the siege in October of 1781. The things that seem to pique people's interest the most tend to be uh, the weaponry, musket demonstrations, the artillery demonstrations in particular. You also will find that a lot of people are really fascinated by the, the kitchen because it's very simple but a very efficient way of uh, cooking for large numbers of people. Well, this is an example of how they really cooked in the Army back then. A lot of movie sets and uh, such will show open fires around these camps and your tents are set up of fabric. You'll be able to burn your camp down. So what was in place was to dig large circular trenches behind the encampment with a series of fire boxes dug out around it, giving every tent a separate stove to cook on. It's actually a very, very efficient way to cook. It was safe. These fires are down in a hole or they're gonna straddle it much like this one here. They're using two different styles. It's really very efficient. Open fires waste a lot of heat. It's not a whole lot of food being given to these guys. And there are times on the march when the food's not with the wagons and you'll read accounts of guys eating everything from bark off of trees. They're eating candles, they're eating soap, leather portions of their uniform and shoeing. Squirrel heads are documented. Even an officer's dog was eaten in camp. Welcome, my name is Greg Schneck, and you're down here at the 1780 farm site, a Midland farm, about 100 to 200 acres. And tobacco, it'll be about five acres on that. And that's the tobacco field you see behind me. We'll be working that all through the summer, getting the worms off, weeding it, topping it, taking the suckers off. It's a lot of hard work there. Well, welcome to the kitchen. And the kitchen's gonna be hotter in just about any place on the farm other than that tobacco field. We got a fire roaring behind me here. And with that, we're gonna be cooking as well as preserving foods in here. So the kitchen's gonna be quite warm. And this is Gretchen. And Gretchen is making it look like a beautiful peach pie. So remember, the kitchen's a vital point on the farm. This is where the ladies are going to work. They spend about 75% of their time in here. About 50% of that time is preserving food, salting, pickling, drying. And the other part, 25%, is going to be cooking. This is kind of the star of the camp. This is our uh, light six-pounder brass battalion gun very common type of weapon that traveled with, with infantry to support them in combat. And daily, uh, at least once, sometimes twice, uh, with staffing, we'll, we'll fire this thing for the uh, audience. Usually what we'll do is um, do a portion of the uh, talk where we'll um, give people a little bit of background information on artillery and how it was used in the time period. Then for the second part of our demonstration, we'll have members of the audience come up here with us and take positions on the weapon so they get a really good idea of what it took to load and fire one of these weapons. We'll get them back where it's safe and then our crew will go ahead and fire off a blank charge. One of the things that probably struck a lot of these young men is the very regimented lifestyle. Every aspect of their life was, was controlled um, by, by schedules, by the beat of the drum. Um, they're also going to be in uh, rather cramped quarters to say the least. You'll see a, a real contrast between the living conditions for the enlisted men as opposed to officers. What I want them to walk away with, first of all, is a sense of pride. Most people come out here, they're very proud of being Americans. And this tends to reinforce that because they'll come away from here very often thinking, my gosh, what these people had to go through to start this new country. While we focused on the outdoor living history areas today at Yorktown Victory Center, our traditional museum galleries help to tell the story of America's struggle for independence. A cornerstone of our galleries is one of the earliest versions of the Declaration of Independence currently on display. For more information about the Yorktown Victory Center and our sister museum, Jamestown Settlement, and the Historic Triangle, visit our website, historyisfun.org.